Are you also tired of one-size-fits-all weight loss plans? Meet Noom, the personalized solution that meets you where you are. Noom is able to understand your unique needs, from dietary restrictions to medical concerns. Unlike restrictive programs, Noom embraces your lifestyle and choices. Discover a sustainable approach to weight loss, tailored just for you. Honestly, Noom felt like it was made for me. It's not just about what I eat. It's about understanding why. With Noom, I've learned so much about myself and built healthier habits that stick. It's all about progress, not perfection. Say goodbye to restrictive diets and experience the Noom app for yourself with personalized lessons and expert coaching. Noom's psychology and biology-based approach has helped over 5.2 million people achieve their goals. Stay focused on what's important to you with Noom's psychology and biology-based approach. Sign up for your trial today at Noom.com. That's N-O-O-M dot com. And check out Noom's first ever cookbook, The Noom Kitchen, for 100 healthy and delicious recipes to promote better living. Available to buy now wherever books are sold. Have you ever covered a carpet stain with a rug? Ignored a leaky faucet? Pretended your half-painted living room is supposed to look like that? Well, you're not alone. We've all got unfinished home projects, but there's an easier way. Thumbtack is the app that makes it easier to care for your home. Pull out your phone and in just a few taps, search, chat, and book highly rated pros right in your neighborhood. Download Thumbtack and start caring for your home the easier way. All right, so you know you have to take action with your portfolio, but you're stuck with dilemmas. You're stuck with doubt. Are you tired of that situation? Well, I do have a solution. Fellow investors, bonjour. This is Mike Yeru, founder of Dividend Stocks Rocks and passionate investor. You're listening to the Dividend Guy blog podcast where I and my co-host Veronique will help you invest with more conviction so you can enjoy your retirement. Dividend Growth Investors, bonjour, Makiru here. You're listening to the Dividend Guy podcast, uh, number four of this series on how to invest in 2024. Um, so we're batch recording those episodes, and at this point in time, we're in the middle of the series. I'm not even sure what we're going to talk about, so I'm going <laughs> to let Veronique let you know what is the topic of the day. How are you doing, Veronique? Uh, as always, I'm doing fine, Mike. Um 2024 is just starting up. And so far, what we did is a recap of 2023, which revealed how sector allocation greatly impacts our results. Then we discussed stock allocation using three categories. Today, we will share a powerful yet simple tool to analyze companies, a stock checklist. And believe it or not, it's just a page only. So you can download it and it's you're going to see how easy it is to use it. And it's not going to be those like kind of like long books where you have to spend like half an hour on each of your stocks. You can fill that in in like a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So Mike, the stock checklist is born from the DSR buying process. Dividend Stocks Rock members wanted, wanted a tool to ensure their next buy followed our strategy. This gave you the idea of building a one page, like you said, that includes the important aspects to analyze equities. How is it divided? So it's divided into four categories. So it's like super simple, super clean. So the first one is the role. Then we focus on dividend because obviously we are dividend growth investors. So we, we need to focus on that. Um, the third part is about the dividend safety because it's one thing to know what the dividend is about. But then the next question is, am I going to get paid next year? So we're going to talk about that. And the last part, it's my favorite section because we're talking <laughs> about growth. Mm -hmm. Listeners, um, you can how hit pause and download the stock checklist by entering your name and email at thedividendguyblog.com slash checklist. Mike, what do you look at in the allocation and role section? So the allocation and role se section is all about understanding what's that company. So first thing is, what percentage do I want to invest 
in a stock. So that is like aligned with how many companies you want to follow every quarter. So if you want to like follow roughly 30 stocks, well, then it's about 3% that should be your target. So when you look at your portfolio, if you have a stock at 7%, Maybe you should start asking yourself some questions about, is it too much? Am I too overweight? Because then um, you maybe your exposure to that risk is way too much. Mm -hmm. Then we move on to defining the company sector and industry uh, to know what they're about, a little bit more about their business model, and also your versus your overall exposure to that sector or that industry. And this is where you realize that you own five banks and they're all in the same industry and maybe you get overweight in that. Just, <laughs> just saying. Um, after that, you have a little bit of thinking to do because do you have like two key questions where we asked you what this company brings to your portfolio. So does it bring like stability? Does it bring income, uh, growth? Is it exciting? Are you like fully confident in that business because you know it inside out? So it brings some peace of mind. So it's just to know what, what should it brings going forward. And the last one is the role played by this company in your portfolio. So pretty much going back to the episode that we did yesterday um, about the categories. So the uh, holdings, uh, the core holdings, the educated guests, or the uh, falling knife slash uh, speculative plays. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what questions can we find in the dividend section? So the dividend section is really to give your yourself a good picture of this company. Is it a dividend grower or not? So we're going to look at if there was a dividend cut in the past 10 years. So it's easy. You answer yes or no. And then mm -hmm. do you have like five years or 10 years dividend growth history? So a dividend history or dividend growth history. So then you know how many years that company have been a dividend payer and how many years it has been a dividend growth payer. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to also ask you uh, if, if there was a consistent dividend increase over the past three years at minimum, just so you know, so where you stand. So if the past three years or just the same dividend, you're starting to raise red flag here because it tells you the company may get into trouble and it's definitely not a dividend grower anymore. Uh, finally, we're going to ask you, um, what is the five-year and one-year dividend growth rate? So then you see if the, the past five years have been good, but sometimes when you look at numbers like this, you may see a company showing you uh, let's say a 10% analyzed growth rate for the past five years. But then you realize that the first two years, the company increased by like 20% or something like crazy numbers. And then the last three years, those increase are slowing down. And the last year was like just 1%. So mm -hmm. then again, it's a way to quickly identify a red flag. And the last question is about the Chowder score. So the Chowder score is a pretty good tool to know where the growth is coming. So is it coming from the yield or from dividend growth or a combination of both? So the higher the score is, usually the better, but it's just to understand if you have a stock paying you a 3% yield, but has a dividend growth rate of like 5%, that's a Chowder score of 8 it's not that high. So maybe you want to find something that offers a little bit more in terms of combination of yield plus dividend growth. Mm -hmm. Listeners, we know that 2024 comes with some uncertainties for investors. This is why we'll remove the fog with you during our next webinar. On Wednesday, January 10th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, we'll share with you a 2024 investment playbook. What else will investors get, Mike? Uh, a lot of fun for first. <laughs> answer <laughs> to their question as well. Because as usual, I will stay for a good hour to answer all questions. But most importantly, I want to do a recap of what happened in 23 and then talk about all the major teams of 24 where you can take action and you can bring some tweaks in your portfolio to make it a little bit better. I'm also going to share my favorite stock picking ideas for growth, defensive plays, and some hidden gems. After the presentation, as you said, Mike, we'll stick around for an extra hour to answer your live questions. And you know, the Q&A part is 
always highly appreciated. So please save your spot now at thedividendguyblog.com slash webinar to attend the live session or get the free replay. Again, thedividendguyblog.com slash webinar. I'll see you there. And of course, uh, there's no point in investing in dividend stocks if the dividend gets cut, right? So this is where the part on safety is very uh, comes very important. What metrics does it include? Um, yeah, so I like to talk about safety first when you come as a dividend growth investor, especially as you get closer to retirement or if you are retired. It's one thing to get paid, but it's even better if you are sure that you're going to get paid in the, in the future. Uh, so then we're going to talk about what's the payout ratio. And most importantly, if the payout ratio has increased or not over the past five years. So then it gives you an idea if the payout ratio keeps increasing year after year, chances are at one point the business will not be able to maintain their dividend growth rate policy. They will have to pay, take a pause and maybe eventually cut it off. So watching a payout ratio goes up for one or two years, that could be a uh, there's could be a good explanation. But for the past five years, always going up, that means that the dividend grows faster than earnings. And that situation is not sustainable. So something must happen. Mm -hmm. We also ask if the company issued more debts or more uh, share or units. So again, the company may have plenty of great growth projects, but they need capital to do it. So if they keep getting more debt and more units, you need to know what they did with that debt, with that money, and if it's generating better funds from operation for per share or uh, so FFO or uh, better earnings per share EPS. And finally, well, at DSR, we have the Refinitiv Credit Score, which is an aggregate of like six or seven um, credit score ratios that are put together, and it gives you a ranking from zero to 100. So the highest the credit score is, the safest the balance sheet is, so the strongest the balance sheet is, and the safest the dividend is. Mm -hmm. Finally, we at Dividend Stocks Rock focus on dividend growth stocks. That means our stock checklist must include a part on growth. This one is based on the dividend triangle, right? Yes. So dividend triangle is three metrics, and I'm actually going to do a full video explaining how I read the dividend triangle because I mean looking at the three metric is one thing understanding the um, the relationship between all of those lines going up or down is another so mm -hmm. the graph I look at is the revenue growth the earnings per share growth and the dividend growth over the past five years. That helps me understand exactly what happens with the business. And in the checklist, we also add the five-year cash flow from operation because sometimes earnings per share could be tricky. Uh, they're based on accounting principles. And if a company like did a big write-off because of like an impermanent value or they have amortization uh, or they make a big acquisition, that will change the earnings per share but will not necessarily affect their cash flow. So cash flow operation is also a good metric to follow. By mm -hmm. the combination of those, then you'll see if you face a thriving business or a struggling business. Hey, Dividend Growth Investors, this is Vero. Mike is currently taking a sip of water, which gives us 10 seconds, and I literally mean 10 seconds to grow the podcast together. Go on Spotify or Apple Podcast, hit pause, and then under our logo, you'll see two very interesting buttons. One to subscribe, hit that subscribe button now, and then give us a five-star rating. You know, our goal is to help more investors just like you, so please spread the love. Thank you. And you know what? The stock checklist is great for analyzing a stock before buying in it, but it's also a good way to review your holdings and start the year on the right foot. Right, Mike? Um, yeah, it's definitely a great cheat sheet to just do that quick review where you already know the company, but sometimes what happens is you start building up position here and there, and at one point, you don't even remember why you have a company in your portfolio and you likely keep it either because it's doing well, so you feel good about it, 
or it's going down and then you're just thinking, oh, I'm going to wait until it recovers. But if it doesn't pass the checklist, checklist test and then you have a bunch of no's on that that list that screams a red flag and definitely you should take action right away on it instead of dragging that decision for so long that it will hurt your portfolio and never forget that when you keep a loser in your portfolio for too long you're not only just hoping that the stock will recover while hoping is not a strategy, but you also miss an opportunity. So there's an opportunity cost where you could have invested in another stock that could have done better, that could have met your investment criteria and make you feel a lot better about your portfolio. All right. So, um, so far in this series, listeners, we have uh, looked into your sector allocation and made sure that everything is on set. Then we talked about stock allocation with um, the three categories that, that we use. And then today uh, we uh, give you a free stock checklist to review your holdings. So at this point, you might have some doubts about some of your uh, some of the stocks in your portfolio. It is time to visit thedividendguyblog.com slash checklist to download the fillable PDF to uh, get things done simply. Thank you, Mike, for providing this checklist to investors. Uh, for more tips and on how to invest in 2024, join us on January 10th at 1 p.m. Eastern time for our public webinar. Save your spot at thedividendguyblog.com slash webinar now. For the show notes and related content, including previous episodes of this series, visit thedividendguyblog.com slash 155. Tomorrow is already the last episode. We will end it with a full length one on how to set your retirement plan. Subscribe to the show now to get notified. And until then, stay, stay invested. invested. Hey, fellow investors, it's Mike here. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Please note that the Dividend Guy blog podcast is at no time issuing buy or sell recommendation. Please do your own due diligence as this podcast is recorded for information and hopefully fun purposes only. Uh, make your research, make sure you do your stuff. We're not responsible for your losses or your profit after listening to this episode. And until next one, stay invested. If you're in business, you probably have a website, but can your site handle your growth? How many visitors before your site slows down or crashes? What about storage and data security? From web hosting to virtual servers, Pair Networks provides the online infrastructure you need to start, grow, and flourish. When it comes to security and updates, don't worry, we've got you covered. Our 24-7 U.S.-based customer support is the best in the industry. No frustrating chatbots or sitting on hold for hours. Check out Pair.com today to learn more. That's P-A-I-R dot com.